Science to Wire, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is August the 2nd, 2019. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, boxing has a lot of pomp and pageantry. Right? Part of what you're watching, both before and during a fight, is a show. Right, You are being entertained. People are throwing image. Right, They're playing cards with their fighter's image, with the public narrative. Some of it is real, some of it is fake. Now, this is one man's opinion. But this whole saga concerning Canelo... Supposedly trying to negotiate with Sergei Derevyanchenko is mandatory. For a middleweight title fight, to me, is complete poppycock. Right? I think Canelo is so big at this stage that the titles don't matter. I think you, the public, is more concerned about Canelo fighting big-time opposition. Right? Golovkin, Demetrius Andre, Sergei Kovalev, than it is Canelo fighting fighters who might be great but aren't as well known, who are his mandatories for different belts that he has. Right? In other words, Canelo is so big that at this stage, the belts don't matter. Let me say, he's not alone in this. I think um, you, the public, want to see Manny Pacquiao fight Errol Spence or Terrence Crawford, right? You don't care if belts are involved because you know the winner of that fight has a claim to being the best at 147, right? Titles are great marketing tools for lesser known fighters. People trying to establish themselves. People trying to convince you that they're among the very best at their weight class. But titles really don't matter. In my opinion, when you reach the Canelo level of the sport. Right? Canelo could say, hey, I'm retired. Wait a year. See how things shake out. Then come back and say, you know what, Callum Smith, I want to fight you. And Callum Smith, who may have made successful defenses during that period of time, would say, hey, let's do it. Let me tell you, you, the public, wouldn't even care if the fight's at 168 or 175. If the fight's for Callum Smith's title or is just a glorified exhibition, you would want to see the fight. Well, let me tell you what I think's going on here. Understand, Canelo has already failed... That's the word I want to use, failed. A drug test where he was found to have clenbuterol in his system. Right now, I don't want to get dragged into some narrative, some poppycock story someone's concocted of a professional prize fighter with millions of dollars on the line, with his eligibility on the line, with the risk of suspension on the line, uh, carelessly taking tainted meat, right? Now, maybe that story works if you're a young guy who can barely afford hot dogs and you're just starting out in the sport. Okay, fine. You know, we understand what you're doing by the hot dog truck. But that doesn't work when you're already a multi-divisional champion and you've been in the spotlight and you understand the drug testing protocol. Right? That just that just doesn't work. So understand, clenbuterol is a weight cutter. You have different kinds of drugs. We need to know the drugs. Right? By the way, the Diana ball that Dylan White is supposed to have taken, that's a major drug, folks. That's a major drug. Right? That's a muscle builder. Clenbuterol is really when, you know, you need to lose those last few pounds. Skipping dessert, skipping water, 
just isn't totally doing it for you. You need to speed up your metabolism. Right? That's what that's for. In my opinion, Canelo is having problems making 160. Right? You know that because there were serious talks this summer for Canelo to fight 175 pound champion Sergei Kovalev. Right now, folks, if a guy has taken clambuterol in the past, a weight cutting drug, to make 160, if a guy rehydrates several pounds after the weigh in for fights for the title at 160, if he was in talks, with the 175 pound champion. Think about it, right? Talk so serious that there was talk about step aside money. So Kovalev would be able to pay off Anthony Yard, his opponent. They're scheduled to fight later this month, right? To postpone that fight so Kovalev could fight Canelo, right? There's no way you're serious about fighting at 175. If you're also simultaneously supposed to be serious about signing to fight the Revianchenko, you're mandatory at 160. From this seat, and I know it's not the public narrative, that's fine. From this seat, I don't think Canelo ever again fights at 160 pounds. I think he has a problem losing weight to make weight. I think it's more likely that he fights Golovkin at 164 or 168 than it is that he ever fights him again at 160. Right? Just look at Canelo. Look at the muscle. Right? Just ask yourself, can you fit that much muscle? At 160. Folks, pull up the Rocky Fielding fight, where he takes Fielding's title at 168. Look at Canelo and ask yourself, the guy you saw that night, could he easily lose eight pounds and not be impacted at 160? Now I know he lost the weight, he fought another guy who is struggling to make weight at 160, Danny Jacobs, right? Understand, <laughs> they negotiated an interim weigh-in for that fight, right? A weigh-in after the regular weigh-in. And Danny Jacobs said, to hell with that, I'll pay the fine, right? In other words, Jacobs gained so much weight after the initial weigh-in. And just look at Jacobs at the initial weigh-in. You knew 160 was unnatural for him. Let me also say too, and I'm sure there are a lot of people in their 30s who can relate to this, right? I remember that decade. You know, you're in your 30s and you hop on the scale and wow, somehow you weigh more than you did in your early 20s. Right? You think to yourself, well, when I was younger, I guess I was running around with a crew and we were hitting clubs and stuff like that. I guess I was burning a lot of calories then. But understand, your metabolism also slows down. Even when you're a professional athlete. Guys who made weight in their 20s get to their 30s and suddenly the world's not the same. For some people, they get to their late 20s. And they can't make the weight that they made at 21. Canelo can't make 160. But he doesn't want to vacate the IBF title. Right? Because he doesn't want to look like he's giving up titles. He wants you, the fan, to remember him as the middleweight champion. Right? If he negotiates a fight with Kovalev, he wants to sell that fight as 
currently reigning middleweight champion, jumping two weight classes to take on the light heavyweight champion. Right? He doesn't want to set the precedent of giving up titles or looking like he's dodging mandatories. Understand, Derevyanchenko has only lost once in his professional boxing career. And that was to his stablemate, his sparring partner, Danny Jacobs, by split decision. Right, Derevyanchenko is a hell of a fighter. He might not be well known, but he would give Canelo all he could handle. So, of course, what's the poppycock routine that the people out there came up with? Right now, this is one man's opinion. I'm not saying I have any inside information. But you know the drill. Canelo pretended to be negotiating with Derevyanchenko. He didn't want that fight. He doesn't need Derevyanchenko for his legacy. You, the public, barely knows who Derevyanchenko is. By the way, his nickname is The Technician. That should, that should give you a hint on who this guy is, right? He's one of those Ukrainian fighters that time and time again proves that in terms of per capita, you'd be hard-pressed to find a country with more top-level talent than the Ukraine, right? Well, so the deal is that the Canelo people, knowing that Canelo was just recently negotiating the fight at 175, the Canelo people, of course, are acting like they were negotiating in good faith to fight the Revianchenko at 160. Lo and behold, the negotiations were of such low quality, they wanted to pay Derevyanchenko so little, supposedly, right, that the IBF has stripped Canelo of his belt at 160. His promoter, a card player, Oscar De La Hoya, is outraged in public, right? Oh, man, how could you take our title like this? Right? Let's be real here. Canelo didn't want this fight. I question whether Canelo could even make weight for this fight. Right? Canelo has earned the titles he had at middleweight, but he can't make middleweight anymore. By the way, did anyone notice that Golovkin's last fight was at a catch weight, 164? I'm wondering if Golovkin can make middleweight anymore. Let me also say, too, one way to avoid Demetrius Andre is to leave the division. Right? You're, you're hanging around middleweight. You see Jamal Charlo. You see uh, Andre. You see Derevianchenko. You know, you know everyone's looking to see if you ever come within the area code of Clambuterol again. Right? That's as good a time as any to leave the division. So I don't think Canelo was serious about fighting Derevianchenko. I know his team's not going to say that, right? Canelo was in a position where he doesn't want to look like he's giving away belts, like he's vacating. So, of course, you have the fake negotiation. You price yourself out of the fight. Some older fighters, Bernard Hopkins is one of them, talks about how when he didn't want to fight a guy, he would price himself out of the fight. He'd say, hey, I'm willing to fight you, but for public relations reasons, he would say, yeah, but I want a million dollars. When, of course, everyone knew the gate wasn't going to be a million dollars. Right? People weren't going to step up to make that fight happen. Canelo didn't want this fight to happen. Why does he need to fight a tough guy, a 33-year-old like Derevianchenko, a guy who's been around, a guy who spars with Danny Jacobs? A guy who saw what Jacobs did wrong against Canelo can literally talk to Danny, <laughs> right? Danny and here tight. He can literally talk to Danny and say, hey, man, what happened in that fight, player? Hear all about it. Show up against Canelo, not make those mistakes. Right? Canelo doesn't want to deal with that. So we have the fake outrage. Oh, my God, they stripped us. Trust me, 
the IBF, I'm sure, would love to have. One of boxing's marquee guys as its champ at 160. Right? He earned that title. But obviously, the negotiations were such where they were like, hey, Canelo, are you going to sign for this fight? Delay, delay, delay. Hey, man, I want a lot of money. I want too much money. You know, delay, delay, delay. After a while, the IBF realized this guy's not serious about fighting us. Hell, they could read the tea leaves. They, they could pick up the paper like the rest of us and see that Canelo's been talking about fighting at 175, 15 pounds higher than the middleweight limit. So, enjoy the show. Enjoy the theater. Right? Oscar De La Hoya deserves an Oscar for the acting performance and looking outraged that his fighter, who won't fight the mandatory contender at 160, but who's been pretending to be negotiating with him, has been stripped of his title. Right? At a certain point, the IBF had to move on. You can't have mandatory contenders and then not force fights. Let's shift gears. Let's talk about Kovalev, a guy who Canelo wanted to fight, right? Of course, Kovalev needed enough money to pay unbeaten Anthony Yard step aside money. The Canelo people didn't want to pay that money, right? I'm, I'm wondering what the Canelo team is doing, right? This seems to be a middleweight and light heavyweight version of the Joshua team. How did that work out for Anthony Joshua? Right? Canelo could have been fighting Kovalev this summer. Could have been trying to annex the 175-pound title. Think about that. That's a title Canelo hasn't won yet. Also, Kovalev is the perfect opponent for Canelo. Right? Because if you can get by Kovalev's jab, and Canelo has the upper body to dodge a jab, doesn't he? If you hit Kovalev in the body, right? Kovalev has fallen apart in past fights, hasn't he? The Andre Ward rematch, the Alvarez fight, Kovalev has straight fallen apart. Big puncher, weak body. Perfect person for Canelo to fight. Now, somebody who's doing the negotiating has to understand that part of the negotiating process is thinking about what you get if you win the fight, right? As I've said many times, too many times here online, in my opinion, Joshua would have been better off win or lose fighting Deontay Wilder the longest reigning heavyweight champion right now with an alphabet soup title, right? I'll agree, I'll agree. Fury, the lineal, has been reigning a long time, right? But just understand, win or lose, Joshua would have been better fighting an established, well-known commodity, a guy who entered the ring with his own belt, then he was fighting Andy Ruiz. Well, Canelo, all I can say is, how could you negotiate with Kovalev and then not give Kovalev enough where he can give Yard step-aside money and get paid like the champion he is at 175 pounds? I don't get it. I, I personally think low ballers are kidding themselves. Well, let me just say this. Instead, Kovalev, a champion again who would have been perfect for Canelo to fight, is fighting one of the sport's hardest punchers pound for pound, a name you need to know and underline, Anthony Yard. I was watching the Daniel Dubois fight and I thought to myself, wow, this guy hits hard. I thought, wow, you know, is there a guy who hits harder than this guy who, <laughs> who doesn't have a belt? 
And then it dawned on me that pound for pound, that person might be Anthony Yard. Right? Yard is a puncher. Folks, as I've said, you know when you're dealing with a special puncher. Well, you don't even have to name the punch the guy throws well. You know, you don't say, oh, yeah, that guy has a great straight right hand. With Anthony Yard, all you have to say is he's a puncher. Now, let me say this. I don't know what's going on in the UK, but I can't remember that country having this many pure punchers at the same time, right? Joshua, who is a big-time puncher, Dubois, Yard, how are they doing it? Well, you know, I asked the same question of how guys have hit so many home runs this season in baseball, but we'll just leave those comments hanging. So let me just say this. Yard is a big-time puncher. Yard would be an absolute nightmare for Canelo. Right, Canelo to me is one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in the sport of boxing. But Yard's a physically bigger man. Right, Yard just on size hits harder than Saul Alvarez. Right, you hit Kovalev in the body, he might fall down like a house of cards, just like he did in the first Alvarez fight. Right? Might have no punch resistance whatsoever. I get the feeling Kovalev's been draining himself to fight at 175. A lot of light heavyweights do because the next floor up is cruiserweight at 200. Right? You don't have that intermediate 187 pound weight class where a guy can say, okay, I can't make weight at 175. Let me just fight at 187. Instead, what I'm seeing are guys can't make weight at 175. They either retire or they drain themselves. You're going to have a higher percentage of drained fighters at 175 than you are in other weight classes. So Kovalev is so drained that Kovalev has little punch resistance. But... Let me say this, a great jab is a beautiful thing to have. Kovalev has it. Now Yard's defense is underrated. Yard rolls with punches. You'll notice Yard comes in, big puncher, but he comes in and he has his hands like this. You'll notice he's adept at having you hit his hands. You start to throw a punch, he moves away. He catches punches on his torso, on his arms. Right? His defense is better than you think it would for such an offensively blessed fighter. Right? But understand, Yard's whole construct of being outside waiting for gaps, jumping in. Right? Trying to collapse the pocket. Sometimes he's trying to move slowly. Gets hit on his arms. He's hoping to counter you. That whole construct is made for double and triple jabs. In other words, Yard is waiting for gaps to get inside. That double jab keeps him outside, eliminates the gaps. Kovalev can actually move too. Right, so Kovalev, who himself has a big punch, you might remember him stopping Jean Pascal. Right, Kovalev used to be known as a big puncher. Right, Kovalev actually has boxing skills. With Buddy McGirt in his corner, that's what he's focusing on these days. Now, he's a plus 225 favorite. Yard is a plus 175. I could easily see this fight ending with Yard winning by KO. I don't know who wins this fight. I don't have to to bet it. All I have to do is know the scenarios. The fight's in Kovalev's backyard. Kovalev is the better boxer. Right? He's the better boxer than Anthony Yard. 
right? He's the one with the jab. The spacing is going to be crucial in this fight. And while Yard figures out the spacing, he has to be cognizant of Kovalev's power. Right? So to me, if the fight goes the distance, Kovalev wins it. Kovalev has a chance at a decision. To me, Kovalev, the more experienced fighter, Right? Understand, Kovalev has been involved with some of the biggest trainers in the sport. Abel Sanchez, Don, John David Jackson, now Buddy McGirt. Right? Kovalev has fought some of the best fighters in recent memory in the sport. Andre Ward, for example. Right? He fought Bernard Hopkins. So to me, Kovalev is the more experienced guy. He's the more skilled guy. Right? The bet I like, even though it's a little expensive at a minus 225, is Kovalev to win. I'm not saying he necessarily wins. It's just that I could see Kovalev winning by decision or by stoppage. Right? Jabs can blind you and then right hands travel behind them. But I'm going to hedge the play with Yard by KO. Right? Kovalev looks so bad to me. So bad to me. In the second Ward fight. Right? I'll agree some of the shots went low. I'll agree with that. But understand, the opening shot in the round, the last round, was a right hand up top by Andre. Kovalev is finished never recovers, doesn't know how to recover. You could tell a guy with good survival skills, where when the guy gets wrong, the guy somehow finds a way to clinch you, is holding you. The ref says, hey, separate, separate. The guy is getting every second out of that that he can. Then the guy's moving away. The guy knows not to be up against the ropes and stuff like that. Kovalev couldn't clinch Andre Ward. Kovalev found himself over by the ropes. He's just getting hit and stuff like that. Right? When the punch is straight low, somebody with his wits about him would have hit his opponent low. Right? Would have said, hey, what's up with this? You know, stop the action. Complain to the referee. Right? Anything to get a break. I've seen other guys who are running out of gas in a round. Think Bernard Hopkins against Joe Calzaghe. Pretend they've been fouled. <laughs> right? Take a knee. Just to kind of draw attention to the foul. Sometimes the ref, I remember Calzaghe brushes, brushes Hopkins below the waist. Hopkins, of course, milked it to get something like five minutes that round. Kovalev, when he's hurt, it's over. I get the feeling Kovalev isn't the most mentally strong guy I've come across, right? Pay attention to the incidents. He was on a plane the other day. He gets into an argument with the woman, starts throwing money at her, right? Gets kicked off the plane. I think this guy has some issues personality-wise I don't think this guy can stay cool, calm, and collected during crisis moments, right? You want to bet on the fighter who can. Floyd Mayweather was in a tough fight against uh, Zab Judah. Zab Judah fell apart mentally. Floyd Mayweather didn't, right? There is a possibility that Kovalev can't handle Yard's power. There is a possibility that Kovalev just can't handle the moment, right? Understand, the fight's in Kovalev's backyard. He hasn't fought there in a bit, right? You have a whole group of fighters historically. Azuma Nelson was one of them, right? I have the highlights, one of the best fights I've seen. Azuma Nelson against the great Salvador Sanchez. Biggest challenge Sanchez ever faced in the ring. That tapes in my favorites folder here online. Azuma Nelson believed in fighting guys in their backyards. 
Because as Nelson put it, hey, they have to worry about the local press and family and friends and tickets. I get to just show up. <laughs> no. Less stress for me. Right? Anthony Yard is going to show up to Kovalev's backyard. The local press, I'm sure, is going to have high expectations of a fighter who, in my opinion, isn't mentally tough. Right? A lot could go wrong. Yard by KO should allow you to hedge the play. So in sum, I like Kovalev to win the fight, hedge with Yard by KO. What does that mean? Understand the risk involved. What I'm saying is Anthony Yard, who's unbeaten, in my opinion, has no shot of winning by decision. Right? If he wins the title by decision, and you're playing the hedge I've suggested, you lose it all, right? Understand the risk involved. Understand the risk is all yours because it's your money. That's how I see the fight. I'm expecting Kovalev to be the fighter on his back foot. I'm expecting him to allow Yard to come forward. Because that'll give Kovalev the opportunity to hit him with several sledgehammer jabs. I'm expecting Kovalev to double and triple up the jab. Right? Could bust up Yard's face. Could open the door for Kovalev to throw left hooks and straight right hands. Right? I'm expecting Yard, who is more of a counterpuncher than anything else to be a bit too patient. But over 12 rounds, it's very hard. It's very hard to keep a guy from landing at least some power shots. And I don't feel that Kovalev has ever been in the ring with a guy who hits as hard as this guy. I think Yard is a gifted puncher. That's how I see the fight. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.